This is going to go horribly wrong. Oh yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be great. I'm really bad at this. <laughs> Welcome to Movie Phones Unscripted. I'm Ryan Quantin. I'm here with Zack Snyder and Jim Sturgis. And we're here to talk about Legend of the Guardians. So we're going to answer some of your questions as well as pose a few of our own. I'm going to get the ball rolling, gentlemen. Go for it. So our first question is actually from Matt in Los Angeles. And he wants to know, Jim, how does the animated film experience compare to being in a live action film? Right, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> it's an, I, I mean, they couldn't be more different. I mean, it's specifically from the um, live action movie that I just come from before I started making my did my first session on uh, Legend of the Guardians. I was shooting a film called The Way Back, which was entirely shot outside. There was no studio. We didn't even shoot any interior scenes. It was a film about a group of soldiers and prisoners who walk from Siberia to India. So I just done this kind of incredible journey, and I remember I rocked up at the sessions in Los Angeles with a full beard, bloodshot kind of eyes, and, I'd, and the, the idea of the characters was that they'd all been starving to death, you know. So I was in pretty good shape. Do you think the legend of the Guardians is able to transcend the perception of animated films being just for kids, and in what ways? Catherine Lasky wrote this series of books, and they're for and look, the books were written for um, you know young adults. We didn't try and make a movie that uh, was either just for kids or just for adults. We just, we just wanted to get Catherine's stories into this film. And so I don't think it was, uh, in, in our minds anyway, when we made the movie, uh, the film, the, the animators and myself, and I, I certainly I feel like when you guys um, were rendering the characters, I didn't want to make a movie that was talking down to kids, you know, that where, where we were saying like, oh look, I wonder what, if a kid would think this was cool. So I think that the, the overall experience is just we try to make an immersive world so that if you're an adult or a kid, you know, you believe in the reality that we try to, to, to create in the film. So. And kids can deal with more than you can think, I think, you know. They can handle a bit of emotional weight. Now, oh. Ryan, <laughs> what drew you to the role and what guidance to, uh, were you given about how to create your owl voice? Well, you gave me absolutely no guidance. Zero guidance. So, yeah. That was like one of my ideas. Like, don't give him any guidance. Right, give him total and utter freedom, yeah. which is which is dangerous for an actor. <laughs> one of the the sort of the key things for me was going back to sort of what Jim was talking about earlier. Pretty much all you have at your disposal is just a microphone, so you have to suspend disbelief even more so than you would if you were on a set. So, in my head, once I sort of dived into that world of owls, I never once sort of thought that. I was playing an animated character. I was a living, breathing owl. So every sort of movement, every sort of vocal intonation had to have that kind of air about it. Had to sort of, I had to move with feathers. I had to move as part of that world. We have a, an unscripted question to Zach Snyder from me. Could you please, Zach, tell us a little bit about your tattoos and what they are about? And would you ever consider getting a Legend of the Guardian tattoo across your chest? Oh, yeah. Well, I have one already. I don't want to show it because I'm so ripped that I don't want to frighten anyone. Um, but the, um, well, this tattoo, this is my, uh, my wife, Deborah, who's a producer on the movie. And this is her name. And... Um, these other tattoos are, uh, that's my alert status, of course. And, your favorite color. And this, and this is my alert status. <laughs> right, yeah. And then that is, uh, I don't know what that is. But I just woke the, up with have, it. You and have, because they, they were giving out um, transfer tattoos uh, at the, uh, yeah. at the I wanted last to, I wanted them to give out real tattoos at the premiere, but you know, it's... Yeah, we could have done that, tattoos. yeah. Yeah. But they were doing face paints of um, all the different characters at the premiere last night. And Zach's, Zach's dad. My dad actually got, got a. Uh, got, yeah, and here he got I got a club. But he hadn't seen the film, so he was like, oh man, I got the evil club. I don't know, well, I don't know if face. you can see this, but uh, this is my dad. <laughs> anyway, I told him to make like an owly face, and he did. You, um, you've had some pretty enthusiastic female fans. What's the strangest encounter you've ever had with one of those? Uh, like the, there are some bizarre ones. I, I had. One recently was a letter that was sort of addressed to me that sort of said, would I... It was five pages long, so I'll spare you the details, but it was sort of something about would I uh, perhaps think about giving my sort of uh, love juice to help her in creating a, 
uh, child. Oh, nice. <laughs> that was, was a very, very bizarre and yeah, yeah. completely unscripted. Yeah. And so we should I feel move like, on uh, to the... No, let's talk more about the love juice <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and this, and this it, particular It's very lady. conducive to a, an animated did she send you? Film. Did she send you a picture of herself? Uh, no, that was not included in the no. package. There was a test tube. So you couldn't judge. Because you can go to that website that would, you know, doesn't it, like, if you take two people, it, like, makes a picture oh, yes. of what they would look like? So you could have maybe... Tried it out, see what your babies might have, might have come out like. Yeah, that's a scary state of affairs. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Ryan, what about you? What about uh, growing up? Did you have any like particular influence books or anything like that that made you? In wanna... terms of that animated world, I always. I don't know that. It doesn't have to be necessarily animated, but just something that I think. Uh, was there any stories in particular that like drew you to maybe to acting or even just? To... There was two things. The things that always sort of transcended just uh, like a one-dimensional capacity. I, I liked sort of uh, Star Wars. The fact that it had all these sort of. Uh, like um, metaphorical references in there, the good versus evil battle. It wasn't just, you know, two forces. There was a whole much, there was, there was, there was so much depth to it. And then on the animation front, I liked uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I think that oh, nice. was the first time I'd ever seen sort of... That's a great movie. Yeah, the, the, the two combination, the combination of animation and, you know, real actors working together. And, and at that point, it was totally and utterly seamless to me. And yeah. that was really... Uh, I that movie holds up pretty good, actually, if you watch really? it. Really? Yeah, yeah I'd like to see that again. Yeah, you can watch it again. Yeah, it holds yeah. up pretty good. And what is your opinion of the 3D revolution happening in Hollywood right now? I think that, look, 3D... Um, I think 3D is cool. I think that 3D has, um, you know, its place maybe in Hollywood, I think, or in the future. It's hard to say exactly. I, I'm not... You know, I think the verdict is still out. But I think that... But I think the one cool thing about Legends is it does... It does sort of remind us, like, what's possible with 3D because I think the 3D um, technicians have done an, an amazing job yeah, here sure. with this movie so you get to like go, wow okay that's what they meant when they said 3D could be cool and I because I'd never seen a 3D film before I saw Guardians last night and so oh, you, wow. and so it was my ever. first ex ever no so it was my first experience of seeing a 3D and it, you know and you just cannot deny its power when you watch a film like Legends of the Guardian, you know. I thought I saw that. When I, I, looked, I looked forward and there was a, a guy sort of reaching yeah. at the screen. No, and for was, real. That gym. first feather that comes out, I was like, that's impossible. How do you do that? Like, I have no oh, idea. My eyes. Do that. That's why you have the glasses. <laughs> in case it pokes your eyes out. From, uh, from flying feathers. But no, I was blown away, honestly, Zach. Was, oh, really? Yeah, oh, that's totally cool. floored by the animation and the 3D. Awesome. Well, uh... Thanks, Ryan and Jim. Uh, and thanks, Movie Phone and everyone watching, sending in your questions. And don't forget to check out Legend of the Guardians, uh, September 24th. Oh, that's cool. Well, I thought we were into this, like, yeah. virtual computer world. <laughs>